This is a uh, part of the Garden of Mediocrity from a third place. The garden gives so much more than fruit. I've worked in my mind on more than a few writing projects there, worked out some worries, burying them beneath, forever beneath the mulch and compost. I enjoy the internal sensation that I am gathering from the garden in a fashion not unlike Thomas Jefferson or Voltaire or Cicero, who said, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. I spend my Sundays out there, not in conversation, but consultation with George Bernard Shaw, who said the best place to find guard, God is in a garden. You could dig for him there. And of course, Monet, who said the garden is my most beautiful masterpiece. It is art. Writing is not unlike the work in the soil outside, the high hopes before starting, the impatience, the need to weed and prune and water. If we give to the garden, it tells us stories. It feeds our imagination and seasons our lives deliciously. Someday, when I can no longer tend to the plants and vines, I'll long remember the sun on my neck and the feel of taking a tomato or cucumber off the vine and resting it gently in the basket, and then its sweet taste that afternoon. And I hope the garden remembers me. I wonder if someday when someone else clears out the area to garden or even perhaps build or plant grass, when someone has long impressed his own identity on this land, will some piece of me stay behind? Maybe someone will find an old rusty wire from the bean vines or the rotted out bottom of a basket I left too long in the soil one winter. Maybe someone will find herself humming a tune I left there in the spring air or turning over the ground for lettuce and squash. We try hard not to leave our mark in nature, allowing it to remain its trusted and pure self. But a part of me prays that if someone excavates the area that used to be my garden, she will find some inspiration.